wash away my tears Let the shadows hide my fears Let the pain teach me to be strong yeah. As life goes on As life goes on Help my heart Let my sail with the wind. Let my voice and let Joe the shirts off the cuff come back on the air. Welcome back, everybody. Good to be back with y'all. Uh, today being uh, June 18th, I believe. <laughs> I'm doing an early show today because I've noticed that. Uh, if I try to wait to do a show in the afternoon, then my girlfriend either comes home or while she's on her way home, she wants to talk on the phone, and it takes her usually about an hour to get here, and then she gets here, and then I'm having to pay attention to her, and as much as I love her, then I don't have time to do the show. So, I decided to try to get this out of the way uh, sooner, excuse me, than later. Damn beer. <laughs> Drinking one of these uh, new uh, Coors Light uh, bottle cans. They have the twist off uh, bottle, but it's all uh, an aluminum can, which is very convenient because you can put the lid back on there. Coors Light. They should call me. I could, I could boost sales, I'm sure. Mm. In any case, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, before I get into today's topic, why are people stupid? Let's take care of yesterday's celebrity birthdays. If your birthday was June 17th, you shared birthdays with Venus Williams. She's 33 years old. Wish I had her arms. Barry Manilow is 70. Uh, Thomas Hayden Church is 53. You probably remember him from uh, that TV show Wings. Uh, Newt Gingrich is 70. Greg Kinnear is 50. Will Forte is 43. You may know him from SNL. Uh, Joe Piscopo, also from SNL, is 62 years old. After Jason Patrick is 47. Uh, not, not bad, not bad birthdays there. Oh, also, before I get into uh, today's topic, I wanted a quick uh, update for you guys. You guys remember the story of Brian Banks, a uh, football player who was falsely accused of raping a 16-year-old girl. Uh, the girl claimed that he raped her. It turns out it was consensual sex, but he went to prison for five years anyway, then had to wear an ankle bracelet, monitor her for another five. Then she confessed to everybody that, no, no, he didn't actually do it. They <laughs> met up on Facebook, of all things. And uh, you know he got uh, you know he got his uh, his uh, conviction you know expunged and uh, he's a he's a free man now no ankle monitor uh, doesn't have to register as a sex offender anymore and uh, he's actually been picked up by a pro team pro football team uh, whether or not he'll actually play next year is you know who knows but you know good for him the update being that uh, the government has decided to go after. The young lady in question, uh, they're suing her for fraud, making false statements, uh, because she won about a million and a half dollars from suing the, uh, suing the school system, excuse me, and uh, now the school system wants their money back, the government wants their money back, and they attached uh, damages to that. They want uh, $2.6 million from her, uh, you know, and people in hell want ice water. That's not going to happen. <laughs> They're never going to see that money. They've already got the decision that they can, like, garnish her wages and uh, to try to recoup and all that. They can sue her straight to hell if they want to. But the fact of the matter is she, she spent the money. The money's gone. It's, that, it's really quite that simple. The money's gone. Anyway, but at least, you know, we know that they were, they're going after her on some level. Okay? I still think she should go to jail, but at least they're going after her on some level. So, you know, good, more, more good news for Brian Banks. Anyway, why are people stupid? Now, this is the question that a friend of mine, my friend Liz, uh, posted on uh, Facebook yesterday. Why are people stu stupid? And then she followed it up with, you know, why do people uh, keep going back to somebody that they know from a bad relationship, a past bad, bad relationship that they know is bad for them, uh, and, and the only reason this person wants them back is because they don't want them to be with somebody else. And, uh, you know, and the, and the question is, and she was being very specific to why are guys this stupid? Now, I commented back to her that, you know, that uh, 
this, you know, this type of behavior is not strictly relegated to the Y chromosome. You know, and I pointed out to her that she and probably like all of her girlfriends have done the exact same thing. We've all, at some point or another, we've all gone back or stayed with somebody that we knew we were in a bad relationship with. It doesn't work. It's never going to work. But we keep going back to them or we keep staying in the relationship no matter how many signs point to get the fuck out now. And, uh, you know, and uh, of course... <laughs> I uh, postulated to her that, uh, do you mean guys in general or one specifically? <laughs> uh, she wrote back, no comment. But we, we, by that time, anybody reading this, you know, at this public Facebook page, you know, uh, could have seen that, you know, she meant somebody in specifically. But, and that's okay. I'm, not, I'm neither here nor there on this one. But, uh, I mean, the, I think the real question, you know, is, you know, of course, why do we do these things? I mean, why do we stay in relationships? Why do we go back to people that we know will eventually, sooner or later, hurt us? I, I, I postulated several uh, answers to her. Uh, you know, uh, comfort in something old, so, you know, better the devil you know than the devil you don't. Uh, could be that, you know, he still has feelings for her. Uh, could be uh, that... Uh, like most men, he is susceptible to guilt and tears, okay? Men feel guilty pretty much all the time. It doesn't take much to make a man feel guilty. Even when he knows what he's doing is wrong <laughs> or, or whether or not he knows what he's doing is right. Uh, a woman can make a man feel guilty and a woman turns on the tears and, you know, most guys that I know, most straight guys that I know are, are, are going to tend to buckle. You know, uh, especially, you know, if it's early on in a relationship, if, if, if it's like the 300th time that the bitch starts crying on you, uh, then you, you pretty much have gotten past it. You don't you don't uh, care anymore. I'm like, oh, fuck, cry me a river, bitch. But, uh, you know, it, it, I also postulated that, you know, it could be that he doesn't know that there are other options out there for him. It could be that he doesn't believe that he deserves any better. Uh, I have. I have friends in similar situations, you know, where, you know, they got themselves into a bad situation with a woman, a woman that like treats them like shit, a woman that is uh, verbally and physically abusive. And, uh, you know, he keeps going back, you know, uh, I used to work uh, for a legal uh, defense um, in uh, Albany, New York, and my job was to vet uh, people that would come in, vet, it's a fancy word for an interview, uh, interview people that wanted want to come in and uh, get a pro bono lawyer. Uh, and the cases I dealt with were divorce cases. Now, 95% of the time, it was women coming in. But every once in a while, a guy will come in and tell me about, you know, how his wife is just kicking his ass on a regular basis, you know, like hitting him, throwing things at him, uh, tried to run him over with a car, uh, burned him, uh, punched him, you know. And, you know, most guys being guys, you know, they, they, they don't want to get into physical real fights with a woman. They really don't because th there's never an upside to it, you know. You get into a physical fight with a woman, you know, you know, what's the best thing that could happen? Oh, you won? Oh, big deal. You beat up a girl, you know? And then the, the worst thing that can happen is, oh, you got your ass kicked. You got your ass kicked by a girl. And no man ever wants to be, you know, guilty of either one of those things. But I guess if, you, if you're going to... If you're going to be on one side or the other, I guess you, you want to be the person winning, even if it is beating up a girl. <laughs> but yeah, I... You know, I was in a relationship uh, with, with the ex-wife for seven and a half years, and I, God, I, I, I saw all the signs, and uh, so did she, actually. But you know what? We just couldn't end it any sooner than we did. You know, I mean, obviously, yes, we could, but we didn't want to. See, that's what it really falls down to. You're not ready to, you know, because... When you're in a relationship, especially a relationship like a marriage, where it's one that you've voluntarily come into. It's not like, you know, your mom or your dad or your sisters or your, or your brother. Uh, this is a relationship that you decided that you wanted to be in. To break up feels like a failure, you know? So you don't want to be known as a failure, because, especially in a marriage, because you get into the marriage and it's just like, 
Oh, I promise to be with you forever, and I'm going to love you forever, and we're going to be together forever. And then, you know, you know, a year or two later, you're like, you fucking bitch, you asshole, you know. And before you know, you know, all the evil, hateful shit starts coming out, and. And and it's normal for couples to fight. Uh, now that don't get me wrong, it's perfectly normal. Okay, the happiest couples on the planet fight. The the couples that don't fight, those are the ones that have got even weirder, creepier issues going on. But uh, the ones, the people that fight, that's normal. That's okay. Having the occasional fight is normal. Having a knockdown, drag out brawl like four or five times a week, that is not normal. Uh, you, there used to be a couple uh, right across uh, the way from me here. Uh, that my girlfriend and I, we could hear them four or five times a, a, a week just screaming and yelling and cursing at each other and throwing shit at each other. I mean, the cops were called at least three times that I know of. And, uh, I mean, they would just say evil, hateful shit to them. You know, I remember the, the woman one time, she just screamed at him. She just said, fuck you and fuck our marriage. And I was like, God damn, you know, <laughs> that's awful. You know, but they stayed together. They were, after that incident, you know, they were still together there for at least another, I think, six or eight months. You know, they finally moved out, I think, because the building threw them out. You know, I think they got evicted. But as far as I know, they were still together. I never saw one of them moving out without the other. You know, so. And to address uh, Liz's very specific question, you know, why do you go back to somebody who only wants you back because they don't want you with somebody else. In in a in a way, you know, it, he could be interpreting that as love. You know, it, it's like I I love you so much. The idea of you being with somebody else is killing me. You know, even though I know that we're not right for each other, I know that we constantly fight, but I think we can make things work. And also, I just couldn't bear the idea of you touching another woman, you kissing another woman, making love to another woman. And, and, and that's a load of shit. Basically, you know, she just probably just controlling whore, you know. Uh, and you know what? Knowing the why people do these things doesn't give you an answer as to how to get them out of it. You know, the, uh, for people to get out of a bad situation like that, they have to first, you know, realize that the situation really is that bad. And then secondly, they have to decide, you know, that they're either going to work on it or they're going to get the fuck out of it. And believe it or not, working on it s sounds like the easier uh, option. It really does, you know, because... When you when you when you're working on something with somebody, you know you, you're doing a team effort. You're you're together on this. You're you're trying to make it work, and that's what everybody needs to do in their relationship. They need to try to make things work. They know you get, you have to compromise. You got to give. You got to take. But when but but when your entire relationship is working on it, then that's hardly what I call a relationship. You know, when that's all you do is try to make it work, it's not working. You know, I mean, relationships are hard. I'll be the first one to admit, relationships are really, really hard, you know. And, you know, the reasons people fight, you know, top three are usually money, religion, and kids. Um, you know, in, in my household right now, the greatest tension we have is, is money, because I've been out of work for a while, and uh, I'll be the first to admit, I'm a little too lazy in my job search, you know. Uh, I, I've been going to school uh, Learned to be a uh, veterinary assistant, and I'm now looking to do an internship. But you know, and my, my girlfriend makes a pretty penny. She's we're not going starving, you know. But you know, the 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 stress of her knowing that she's the only source of income is stressing her out. It's making her a little nuts, making her a little angry. And you know, and I can feel it. Even when she doesn't say anything directly to me, I can feel it. But when it comes to say. Uh, religion, not a problem. Uh, and when it comes to kids, neither of us want any. So that's not a problem either. So, I mean, the real... Qu what boils down to is that, you know, like I said, working on the problem seems like the easier option. And, hey, and the old saying is, breaking up is hard to do. And it is. Because, like I said, that is finally the admission of your giving up. That this doesn't work. And, that, and the fact that I love you and you love me is not good enough and that's a horrible thing to have to admit to yourself the fact that you people you you are truly in love with each other 
but that's not enough that's what really hurts and that's why people tend to get back together or they tend to stay with people that they know they shouldn't and we'll get back to that right after this break uh today's music is brought to you by troy klein his first song was as life goes on and here's a second song by troy klein do you believe in love how apropos i'm joe the shirt i'm off the cuff and i'll be right back apology for the clouds up above do you believe in fairy tales do you believe in love do you believe the eyes are like a window that share the secrets that burn in your soul Do you believe that dreams come true? Do you believe in love? Now I'm not talking about the kind of love you used to have With others before we met All filled with heartache and quiet and welcome back once again but more like the magic Joe the shirts off the cuff smile. thank you for cu- still tuning in this thank you for staying with me we've been talking about why people are stupid more, more specifically why people in relationships are stupid hey man love is a powerful bitch i'll tell you that right now love really does make you do incredibly 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 stupid things which brings me up to today's next topic, which is actually quite related to this. It deals today with uh, people in interfaith weddings. Now, as you know, uh, if there's two things I'm completely opposed to. It's marriage and religion. I don't like either one, I'll tell you that right now. They're bad ideas. But mixing the two, especially when you don't share the same faith, is way, 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 way worse. Uh, it's one of those things that people... They meet, they get to know each other, they fall in love. Uh, the fact that uh, you get to know about the other person's religion or they get to know about yours tends to be usually just in passing, not a big deal, nothing that you want to talk about really. Because when you meet somebody, you know, it's like, oh, you're Jewish? Oh, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, what about you? I'm Catholic. Oh, wow, that's great. You're like, oh, what are you, Muslim? Yeah, yeah, what are you? What are you? Yeah, I'm a Buddhist. Oh, yeah, that's great, you know? Because a lot of people uh, take, think of religion as in a very uh, casual way. Uh, I never did. I, uh, <laughs> I've hated it as long as I can remember. Um, mostly because it was force-fed to me. You know, nothing, you know, nothing in particular against any religion. It gives people a lot of comfort. But it's what people do in the name of their religion that kind of bothers me. But that's a little off topic. I'm talking today about why people do stupid things. Why are people stupid? And among the stupidest things you can really do is marry somebody of a different faith, especially when there are certain things you don't talk about. You know, uh, I read I read the article, read an article here by Naomi Schaefer Riley, excellent article, uh, where she did some research and did some interviews, and found that there's just Getting married, the decision to get married is one of those things that people really do, you know, almost on the spur of the moment. You know, they they don't discuss a lot of things. I mean, yeah, they'll discuss the wedding plans. They'll discuss where they're going on their honeymoon. They'll discuss where they're going to live. They might even discuss whether or not they want kids. But what they don't discuss is... um, are we going to have to go to church every Sunday? Um, are we going to raise our kids Catholic, Jewish, Muslim, uh, Hindu? You know, I, what's what's the deal here? You know, uh, you know, uh, do, are, are you going to want to send the kids to uh, you know uh, Catholic school, or uh, maybe a, a Jewish school? You know, Muslim schools they exist. Okay, um, 
or are we going to let the kid make their own decision, which is almost never happens. <laughs> Uh, people love shoving their religion down their kids' throats from like the beginning. You know, just as soon as the kid's born, boom. <laughs> you know, they try to get the kid baptized, you know, boom. They, get, they try to get that kid circumcised, boom. You know. And it, according to the author, it's, a, it's one of those things that, that people don't think about. People think, put in a lot of time and thought into what college they're going to go to, what they're going to study, uh, what city they want to live in. Uh, you know, but they don't put almost any thought into you know how 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 religious you know what what religion am i going to marry into you know uh i mean it starts out people find out that the issues with this when they start looking for a place to get married and a lot of times people do they want to do an interfaith marriage you know have the rabbi and the minister there you know or the minister and the catholic priest you know and uh a lot of churches won't do this and uh, you know they they object to it. So a lot of people have, that are, are of interfaith, you know, end up you know getting married at City Hall or Vegas, which is uh, what I recommend if you're going to get married at all. I mean, it's a complete sham to me in the first place. So why not get married in like the shammiest town in the world? But uh, it's it's something that people don't consider. Let me get you some uh, stats here, if you will. Um, actually, before I go into stats. Um, I think another issue that people don't seem to realize before they get married and to somebody of a different faith is that they don't realize how religious how religious they are until it's time to get married and raise the kids. You know, the average Catholic doesn't go to church all that often, okay? The average Jew does not go to temple all that often, if ever, okay? Same thing with just about any other type of religion. Uh, about a, I'd say about... Mm, no, I'm just guessing here i'd be guessing that about a good 90 percent of the u.s population identifies themselves as some sort of religion or another okay be they mormon or jehovah's witnesses or whatever uh people identify themselves as some sort of religion or another okay now um and it's not until those re that those religious beliefs are challenged in any way that people ever really think of them okay uh, most people like I said the de most devout Catholics or non-devout Catholics let's talk about non-devout Catholics for right now you know they don't go to church uh, they don't go to mass they don't pray they don't say grace they don't do they don't do any of that shit okay uh, but uh, when it comes to the issue of abortion Whoa, 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 the Bible clearly says, actually, no, it doesn't. But they, that's what they'll start with. You know, they'll start, you know, getting you know, really crazy about that. You know, uh, you know, the average uh, Jew, you know, he doesn't really think about his religion all that often either. I've known lots of Jews. I can guarantee you right now, a lot of them really just don't. But uh, as soon as, you know, the, a little bit after they get married, and uh, their kids born, it's like we gotta circumcise that little fucker, <laughs> that little pisha. We gotta we gotta circumcise him. <laughs> it's like when, and a lot, lot these days the big trend is to not circumcise the kids. And uh, you know, a woman that is you know maybe European, maybe she'll begin to ask like, I don't want to circumcise the kid. It's like, well, I want to circumcise the kid. It's my he's my son. His father's Jewish. He should be he should you know look like a Jew, and Jews are circumcised. And all of a sudden, it becomes an issue. Uh, let's see, from my own life, I remember one of my sisters uh, got pregnant uh, when she was quite young. She was, uh, I think, mm, 17 years old. You know, she came to visit me while I was in college. And she asked me, you know, what she should do. <clears throat> and I told her quite simply, it's, go get an abortion. I'll take you to the clinic, you know. And uh, she was like, no, I can't do that. And I'm like, why not? And she's like, well, because, you know, of, you know, my, our Jehovah's Witness upbringing. And I'm like... Well, our Jehovah's Witness upbringing also says not to fuck before we get married. You seem to be okay with that. You know? Yeah, I, like I said, I, I, on the list of why are people stupid, this is one of them right here. Let's see here. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Here we go. In a 2,500-person nationally reported uh, survey commissioned in the book, uh, it was found that weddings with religious leaders of different faiths are rare. Only 4% of interfaith and surprisingly only 2% of same-faith couples employ them. 
Instead, interfaith couples are much more likely to have a civil official, 43% versus 31% of the same faith couples. So there you go. You know, it's 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 tough to find a place for it. I mean, you look, you look, you look, you see movies where they make light of it, where it's like, oh well, we fi- we finally found a way to bring things together. She's Jewish, he's a Muslim, and and then you see, you know, you see you see the scene of like, you know, that one side of the family is all Jewish, the other side of the family in the back they're all they're all Muslim, you know, and they're all looking at each other, staring at each other, but they found a way to make things work, you know. And, uh, you know, the truth of the matter is that's really not normally how it works. Uh, it really isn't. Um, you know, I've dated Protestant girls, Catholic girls, Jewish girls, uh, I think a Hindi or two here or there, uh, definitely a Buddhist here and there. But, um, and most of the time, religion was not that big a uh, deal. I mean, even with Catholic girls, it's like, well, you're not supposed to be fucking before marriage anyway, but they were doing it. You know, according to them, you're not supposed to use condoms either, but they were doing it. I guess they figured as long as I'm fucking, I might as well fuck with a condom, even though the Bible, according to the, the, the Catholic Pope, says you can't do that. And, uh, <laughs> uh, but, but then, you know, once they get pregnant, it's like, oh, we have to get married. I'm like, why can't you abort? It's like, because of God. I'm like, once again... If God was the issue, we wouldn't have we would have been here in the first place. Let's see what here, what do we have here? Um, and another issue when it comes to interfaith marriages, of course, you know, uh, beyond you know just you know how how are we going to raise the kid is you know what holidays do we celebrate? Now, here in my household, uh, I'm an atheist. My girlfriend's Jewish. She, I don't don't remember the last time she ever saw the inside of a temple. (laughs) And it's real easy to be an atheist. You just don't do anything. But you know what? We celebrate uh, Christmas. (laughs) We do. We we get a tree. We break out the presents. We break out the Santa hats. You're not going to find a cross anywhere in the house. (laughs) We're not going to midnight mass or any bullshit like that, you know. But, But that's easy for us. You know, she's a lapsed Jew. I'm an atheist. But for people... You know, there are Catholic, there are Jewish, you know, what holidays are you going to celebrate? And I think what it all boils down to, what people always seem to not understand, despite the fact that everybody tries to preach, uh, you know, tolerance and acceptance, and uh, is that by definition, every religion on the planet is a direct insult to every other religion religion on the planet that's the way it is people don't like to see it that way people like to say like to see it as oh well you know some the liberal uh, jackass you know, jackass <laughs> jackasses they'll tell you that oh it's really all the same thing eventually we're all really just praying to the same god just in a different way a different route and i'm like you know what you tell that to a truly catholic person they'll tell you to go fuck yourself tell that to a jehovah's witness and he'll tell you to go fuck yourself okay Tell that to a Muslim. He will definitely tell you to go fuck yourself, all right? No, no, no. There isn't... (laughs) I'm sorry. You cannot be praying to the one God and so is everybody else, okay? That's just not the way it works. You know, uh, by definition, you know, if you're Jewish, then a Muslim or a Catholic or a Hindu or a Buddhist... they. They they are, in in fact, insulting your religion. By what they do, they insult your religion. You may decide to ignore that fact. That's fine. You can tolerate that. That's fine. But to accept it into your life, your personal life, into your bed, into into a, a, a marriage, you are insulting your own religion. Okay? That is what is happening right there. Now, if you're like my girlfriend or my ex-wife or any of the other chicks I banked, uh, you know, that's not a big deal. But if you happen to actually be halfway devout uh, religious person, then by marrying somebody of a different faith, uh, in my opinion, it's worse than marrying somebody of no faith at all. You know, because at least, you know, I have nothing to insult you with. I don't believe in your God. I don't believe your God exists. But by marrying somebody of a different faith, you, you know, you're marrying somebody that's essentially telling you that your religion is wrong. Okay, it is, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, 
it's paganistic, you know, it's, <laughs> it's a false religion, you worship a false god, might as well be a golden calf up there, okay? That's, what, that's basically what you're saying when you marry somebody of a different faith that's, that, that is actually devout. When two people are actually devout, you know, you're a devout Christian, a devout Jew, you know what? They shouldn't get married. It's, honestly, it's, to me, it's really that simple. Don't get married. It's not going to work. It's going to, you know, I, mind you, there are exceptions to the rule. I am sure that there are devout Catholics out there that are married to devout Jews and devout Muslims married to devout Buddhists. But your religion views you as a hypocrite. That's what you are, you know, and these people could be perfectly happy. They believe that their God is more than willing to accept them the way they are, even though they married somebody of a different religion. But I don't think they're taking a realistic approach to it. I think they, they're basically lying to themselves. And that's what pretty much we all do. That's fine, you know, but please understand that's exactly what you are doing. And on that note, we're going to take a little break with more music by Troy Klein and this one called That Place. I'm Joe the Shirt. I'm off the cuff and I'll be right back. Girl, take my hand, lead me to that place we know, where all the world fades away. Do you recall that place we used to go? Oh, how I wish we could stay. We were two lovers in paradise that time I do adore. I'm wanting that some more. Yes, I do. Cause life is such a bore. Maybe tomorrow we can run away and leave all this behind. This world is so confined. And we need to unwind So girl, let's go back To that place we used to go Where all the world fades away Please take me back To that place we used to know Oh, how I long for that day and Joe Shirts, once again, back and off the cuff. Welcome back, everybody. Oh, God. Hard to believe we're already the last segment, isn't it? I mean, the, the time flies by so quickly. Uh, I, I know it does for me. I, uh, I have the need to talk and talk a lot, and uh, thus I found a way to exercise the demons in my head, which is this show. And back, before we get keep going, back to celebrity birthdays. Today's June 18th. If you have a birthday on June 18th, you share a birthday with Blake Shelton. He's 37 years old, country star. The, Sir Paul McCartney is 71 years old. Isabella Rossellini is 61 years old. Uh, Richard Madden is 27. Brian Ben Ben is 57. Carol Kane is 61. I had the biggest crush on her when I was a kid, and I still do in a lot of ways. And also the late, great Roger Ebert shares a birthday, June 18th. All right, we are back talking about why people are stupid. <laughs> why do people do stupid things? Actually, among, on the lighter side, I think among the stupider things that people do are the ones that we think nobody can see us doing. You know, like, uh, you know, like the person that's just picking their nose while they're, you know, while they're in their car and they think, you know, nobody can see them and we can, or worse yet, you know, you know, we, you know, they don't care. That's, those are the ones, those are the people that really bother me. It's like, yeah, yeah, I know you're looking at me digging for gold. I don't give a shit. <laughs> and, and you, you, you do stupid shit. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm 42 years old now and I find myself having more and more senior moments as time goes by, uh, b beyond the whole, you know, the other day, you know, I was looking for my glasses, and of course, they were right there on top of my head, you know. Uh, but I found myself actually doing this the other day. I went to the bathroom. Uh, to uh, I go in the bathroom. I turn the shower on, right? Get it to the temperature I like. I uh, decide to pop a squat there, you know. So it's, it's, time to, it's time to go. And, uh, you know, and I go, and I get up, and I, uh, you know, I wipe, you know, obviously. 
I, uh, I wipe, <laughs> I wash my hands, and then I go in the shower. <laughs> I got, <laughs> okay, now let's think about that. <laughs> I washed my hands <laughs> before going into the shower. That was already running. <laughs> Oh, I love it when I do stupid shit like that. I truly, truly do. I had one of my neighbors just the other day uh, left his uh, keys in his door the, the entire night. You know, I, I woke up around like 10 in, the, 10 in the morning. It was like a Saturday or Sunday. And I knocked on his door. And I was, you know, he's like, yes. And I'm like, did you forget something? He's like, oh, my God. He's an, old, he's an older guy. He's like, I've been looking for those all day. <laughs> Just stupid shit like that. <laughs> uh, summer is here, almost, actually. I think, I think it's only like a, what is it, only a couple of days away, isn't it? The next week? I don't know who. I, I look around the room as if there's somebody here you know, to answer my question. Like all my producers are here you know, <laughs> to answer my questions. But uh, you know, it's vacation time. The Russian and I, we're considering our vacation options. Uh, but it's expensive, man. Uh, we were thinking about going to New York City uh, right around the July 4th because my mother is going to be visiting one of my sisters there for a month. She's been there actually for the last two days. And she's going to be there, you know, for you know until the 16th of uh, July. And uh, my girlfriend and I were talking about going there, but, you know, it is expensive, all right? Uh, we considered it really only because uh, a buddy of mine, my buddy Johnny Montana, which, uh, by the way, if you can, you can catch it on Facebook, Johnny Montana, the movie. A uh, little plug for my buddy there. Um, he has an apartment uh, in Manhattan, and uh, he, you know, he asked, he told us that if we wanted to, we could stay at his place, you know, and uh, and we thought about it, you know, because you know, having a place to stay, you know, takes the expense out a lot out of a trip because in New York City, you know, we're talking, you know, ho a cheap hotel room, you know, you know, that's halfway decent, clean. We're talking about $200 a night, easy, all right? And a complete, you know, rat trap is still about $85 a night. So, you know, that's, that's pricey and we're planning on being there four nights, you know, so we're thinking, so that we're looking at about $800, you know, for a halfway decent hotel. You know that's that's expensive. So we're thinking, okay, we save eight hundred bucks. That's not bad. We looked into the into the tickets, and for the two of us, round trip, twelve hundred dollars. Now that's without taxes, and that was without insurance, which we always get when we travel. So we were just like, holy fuck, you know, that's that's crazy. So all, all and already that's going to be about fifteen hundred dollars. And then we have to include the fact that, you know, we're not just going to go there and do nothing. No, we're going to want to go out. We're going to go out to dinner. We're going to have to look around. I'm like, that's another grand right there. Easy. So even by saving, a, you know, 800 bucks by staying at my buddy's place, we're still looking at spending $2,500, which we're thinking that's what we pay for a week in, in an all, in all-inclusive resort in Mexico. <laughs> all right. So uh, we're, it looks like we're not going. <laughs> Now, if you're looking for a cheap vacation, uh, apparently the cheapest vacation uh, city in the United States, Las Vegas. Believe it or not, uh, Las Vegas comes to uh, for uh, hotel per night. Boom, Las Vegas. It's the way to go. Uh, uh, the more, more expensive ones, most expensive uh, places like San Diego, three hundred ninety-nine dollars. Uh, Los Angeles, four hundred forty-seven dollars. So please go to Vegas. <laughs> Do yourself a favor. Uh, now, one of the uh, greatest sayings I've ever heard was uh, one I said myself. Uh, when it comes to stupidity and why are people stupid, is that uh, men get to be stupid, women get to be crazy. Now, George Carlin did a joke very similar to that long before I came up with it, but I had never heard the joke. All right, so I can still claim that one is my own, and he worded it a different way. And uh, I think one of them was, you know, uh, other ones I've heard are, you know, uh, women are crazy because men are stupid, and men are made them that way, you know, whatever. But uh, <laughs> one thing women can now blame men on, uh, menopause. I think that's why they now call it menopause, because uh, you can actually blame men for menopause. Uh, in most species, uh, women, usually females, tend to uh, die 
after they can no longer reproduce. That's typically the way it works. You know, that for most species, uh, a little bit after a female is unable to reproduce, her body starts to shut down. It goes into, you know, menopause and she dies. So then the question is, why is it there are so many, wi- so many women, most women, live very long, productive lives after menopause? And uh, they came up with a reason for why women even go into menopause. And the reason, this is, this is the theory now, it's not, hasn't been proven yet. They believe that women go into menopause because men like younger women. <laughs> so what happens is, uh, you know, men keep going for younger women. The older women are no longer reproducing anymore. They're not being sought after. Uh, so they hit that age where they would stop reproducing. But they found a way to survive by what's known as the grandmother effect. Uh, females in early societies found that they were still valued as members of a society, of a culture, be- even though they were older and past uh, reproductive age because they were able to assist the younger women and their children in, in, in the raising and caring, uh, household duties, you know, uh, helping on the farm. These women were still young enough, strong enough to do a lot of physical labor and, help, like I said, helping caring for the children of the younger females. Thus, the grandmother effect. Another theory that was postulated was uh, the reason women go into menopause also is because uh, the gene for going into menopause gets passed on. You're wondering to yourself, well, how does it get passed on if, you know, these women aren't bearing children? Well, because men uh, who are long-lived, older guys, are marrying younger women and they're passing that but that aging gene on to them so that eventually all women go into menopause and continue to live beyond their reproductive abilities. I know, wacky. But basically what it means is it's his fault. <laughs> Cause we like because we lack them young, <laughs> you get menopause. <laughs> Okay, and finally, before we get out of here, um, do you think you have the right to remain silent? Yes and no. Okay, everybody knows that you get arrested, you hear your Miranda warnings, you have the right to remain silent. It's like, boom, it's like one of the first ones out there. You know, if if you wave this right, boom, 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 used against you. Okay, now, what a lot of people don't realize is this only applies to when you get arrested, okay? Okay. If uh, they ask you to come into the station and ask you questions, or if you get put on a on a on this on a, in, a, in a jury stand, you need to invoke your right to remain silent. You need to invoke your right to not testify against yourself. You need to invoke your right to not give information that may harm you in some way. Okay, because once you invoke the right to silence, uh, say you're in court, you're accused of murder, and you, and you don't invoke your right to, uh, to be silent, then it can be used against you. They can say that your silence is evidence that you committed the crime. Did you kill this person? Aha, uh-huh. see? Because he didn't say anything, he's obviously guilty. So, and that can be used against you. But once you invoke that right, once you say, I invoke my right to remain silent, then your silence cannot be used against you. So it's, it's one of those weird little things there. It's like, <laughs> you can't be silent about invoking your right to remain silent. You got to speak up or else they can u- actually use that against you. <laughs> Amazing enough. <laughs> so when I read that, I almost pissed myself. I was like, Really? <laughs> But, but like I said, it only applies if you, the, the right to remain silent, the automatic one only applies if you're under arrest, if you are in custody. But if they're just asking you questions, you have to invoke it. You have to say, I don't want to do this. I, I'm invoking my right. I don't want to talk to you unless you're planning on arresting me. I don't want to talk to you. Thank you, please. I'd rather leave. I want to go. That's it. Never thought it, thought it worked out that way before. But uh, 
they've used this uh, little technicality to put people in prison. It, it, it has happened. And you know what? Maybe I'll go into more of this tomorrow. But for now, you know, that's actually the end of the show. Wow. Big thanks to my friend Liz Rumps out there for uh, giving me the idea for today's show. Uh, I'm Joe the Shirt. I'm off the cuff. And here is Troy Klein one more time with I Don't Want to Be Here Anymore. That's right. I got shit to do. There's a place out there I should be going. There's a life out there I should be living. But I'm here instead. I'm in my bed dreaming of a life I should know There's a girl out there I should be loving On a starry night with the moonlight glow